one. And if you thought I was done talking about George Eliot this month, you would be wrong because now she's just one of the new loves of my life and I want to investigate her a lot more. I have actually, well, no, I will tell you what this book is going to be. So I called it In Search of George Eliot, wanting to um, kind of see what all was on the internet out there to learn more about her because Jane Austen um, and um, the Brontes um, are really on trend. There's a lot out there about them. Um, and so it, you don't really have to hunt as much, but um, George Eliot, she's not really on trend. Um, and I feel like you have to dig a lot more. So I thought if there are any other George Eliot lovers out there, I would make things easier for you and for myself, selfishly, I will have this video as a resource to go back to and see this huge, beautiful list compiled of all things George Eliot that are available um, on the internet. As long as you have internet, I think these are all for free with a few slight exceptions. New podcasts. I think it's a really fun thing now in the age of such an abundance of podcasts to any kind of interest and especially the very specific interest that you have, search um, the terms of the interest and you'll be surprised at what you will come up with. Um, there was an Oxford University prod podcast on George Eliot that was three episodes and I haven't listened to this um, and this is all with my Victober plans. I want to spend kind of free time that I'm not sitting down with big heavy Victorian novels, kind of just having a George Eliot festival of my own. So investigating these things, learning more about her. And then um, there was an episode by the History of Literature podcast that sounded like an interesting discussion. Then there was a podcast called Legacy. Now it is rated E for explicit, so I have not listened to any, any of these. So if you are offended by course language, don't hold it against me. I have warned you and um, I don't, I don't have any idea what the content is actually like, but these are all ones that sounded um, like they could be interesting. And then one that is like top, top priority for me is George Eliot Country Audio Tours. So it's somebody who goes around first in Nuneaton, where she was born, and then um, Warwickshire, I think is the second episode, but they just are talking and walking around her stomping grounds and telling you all about her upbringing and it just sounds fabulous. It sounds like a really high quality production and I'm really excited for that one. That might be the first podcast that I listen to. Um, then there's one called Books Like Us and that in that one they just specifically discuss Middlemarch. So if you're in the mood to hear more about Middlemarch, that is an episode you can look into. And then there is a BBC podcast called In Our Time and they have couple different niches and one is culture and there were three George Eliot episodes that they had. One was on Middlemarch and they have just different literary critics that will come in and give their opinion on the author, give background to the author. They have one on Silas Marner and then they have one um, on Victorian realism and so George Eliot was one of the major authors in the Victorian realism movement. And um, it sounds really interesting. And then one of my favorite podcasts, Bonnets at Dawn, has a George Eliot episode where they interview someone who is an expert on George Eliot. And she just talks about all the reasons why you should read George Eliot. And I think it sounds really lovely. Then let's see. Okay. One I'm very, very excited about. This is one that costs money, unfortunately. There is the BBC Radio Drama Collection. You can buy the physical discs or Audible is putting the collection all together. So whereas before you would have to use up a credit to purchase each one separately, they're bundling them all together. So they've done this with the Brontes, the BBC, you know, Bronte Radio Drama Collection. So I was just searching for George Elia audiobooks and I happened upon this and I was like, oh my God. So it is not out until mid-November, so I won't be able to use it during Victober, but I'm still very much excited. And I think it's maybe not out because more recently they've done Adam Bede, because when I was looking at the radio dramas that were available already on Audible, Adam Bede was not on there. So it will not include Felix Holt or Romola, but still five to have, and I'm excited about that. Um, then let's see. Um, My Life in Middlemarch is a book by Rebecca Mead and 
I am very much interested in reading it. I struggle with books about books, but since I'm really getting into George Eliot, I think I could enjoy it. Then we move on to YouTube, the videos that are just up there that I found about George Eliot. And one is The Secret Life of Books, um, and it's about The Mill on the Floss. And The Mill on the Floss is one that I struggled with, and I will be going back to it at some point. And The Secret Life of Books is um, one kind of celebrity who ha loves this author going around talking about the background of the book and kind of what people, critics have thought of it over time. And so uh, it sounds like an interesting series and they have an episode on the mill on the floss. Then there is a documentary that had um, Juliet Stevenson playing George Eliot uh, called George Eliot, A Scandalous Life. It's a multi-part documentary, so you'll have to find the different parts, but it sounds really interesting. And she had, she had a crazy life. Um, and then George Eliot and Relationships. This is a lecture put out by someone from Gresham College. It looked very interesting. Um, then uh, Rebecca Mead on Middlemarch. So I was saying, you know, she wrote My Life in Middlemarch, but she also did a talk for The New Yorker. So I think if you wanted maybe uh, a really like Cliff Notes version of her book, you could watch her talk from The New Yorker Festival and get a good idea of what the book is like. And then Rural Britain, a novel approach. And uh, I think they visit where um, different sites from her novels and or maybe just specifically from Nuneaton where she was born. I'm not sure exactly because I haven't watched it myself. Um, so those are the first things I found for YouTube. And then I moved on to articles. I was interested in what kind of like scholarly or just more popular articles are out there. And I found some goodies. Uh, the first is from The New Yorker and it's George Eliot's Ugly Beauty. And that title really bothers me like there's so many things that bother me about it like what one why does that have to be the title you can't come up with anything else and I know it's probably got more to it and it's about the ugly beauty in her novels but they're using many people like to talk about how she wasn't that beautiful and it's like such a thing and I don't know why they have to talk about it so much that's a whole tangent um then the BBC has an article called the genius who scandalized society and I think it's to do with the fact um that she was living with someone who was married to someone else and she had kept it really quiet and then when her identity as an author came out then her identity as this woman um living with a married man came out and it was a huge scandal um, the Philosophy of George Eliot is put out by Prospect Magazine. Uh, George Eliot was very much into philosophy, and um, she translated several really interesting works of philosophy. So she was um, very much a phil uh, philosopher herself. Um, then George Eliot, A Novelist for the Now. This is put out by The Guardian, and it was only put out last year. So it will be really interesting to see what they have found relevant to now, which I think classics are very relevant now. That's why they're classics. So I'm really curious about that article. And um, then Pride and Paragon, the Times Literary Supplement. I have no idea what uh, that article will entail, but I noted it down because um, the title alone sounds somewhat intriguing. Um, then George Eliot, novelist, editor, outcast, put out by Interlude. And then um, Controversial Atheist to Secular Saint. Um, so she did really go on um, a, a religious journey. And that is where, um, at points, I feel more of a kindred spirit with Elizabeth Gaskell since she was a woman of faith. And by the end of George Eliot's life, she had totally, utterly rejected religion and anything to do with it. So I do feel kind of that separation from her, but I am still really um, keen on getting to know a lot about her. And then a really exciting thing that I found is that there's uh, the George Eliot Fellowship, which is a society, but they call it uh, a fellowship. So at first I thought it meant like a scholarship, a fellowship that you earn, but it, that is what they call the George Eliot Fellowship. And they put out, people from there put out the George Eliot Review. And these articles on here are free. You can read them online for free and such interesting, you know, scholarly literary articles. Um, one on the symbolism of water and Romola, which is set in Florence, Italy. So there's going to be a lot um, to really um, unpack there. And I find it fascinating. 
So yes, like I said, Victober is going to be kind of a George Eliot fest for me, and I can't wait to read more about her and then a little cheeky um, sneak peek into my nonfiction November TBR. I went ahead and purchased a biography of George Eliot. I did have in mind I was going to purchase um, George Eliot, The Last Victorian, but then when I was looking at biographies, I saw that Jenny Uglo did one of George Eliot, and she did such a marvelous job on Elizabeth Gaskell's biography, so I had to pick up this one, and it just sounds too good not to pick up. I hope that any fellow George Eliot fans out there will find these resources helpful. And of course, I will link everything down below. And I will be back for another video soon. And happy reading!